Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the vasculature of the kidney, that is the renal arteries and the renal veins. Myself, Dr. Ankit Khandelwal, and welcome to our YouTube channel, Anatomy Explained. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So let's start the topic, that is our renal vasculature. Start with the renal artery. Renal artery. Few basic points about the renal artery. That it is first of all, it is a branch which is coming from the abdominal aorta. So it is a branch which directly comes from the abdominal aorta. Around the level, vertebral level, that is our L2 just below the origin of the superior mesenteric artery. So it is just below the origin of superior mesenteric artery which is a unpaired vessel, unpaired vessel for the midgut. We have this pair of renal arteries going perpendicularly on the sides supplying the kidney. Okay. Now if we look over here the kidney then supposedly we try to make the kidney in this manner that suppose this is our right kidney over here. Okay. And there is a left kidney slightly higher up than the right kidney. And we know that the our aorta is lying to the left of midline. The aorta will be lying somewhat over here. Starting from the T12 going down up till the L4 where it actually bifurcates into the two common iliac. So imagine this is the abdominal aorta. It starts at around the T12 and that will come down. This would be your two left renal artery and this would be your right renal artery going to a, their respective hilums, going to the respective hilums inside the kidney. Okay, so this is the right and left renal artery. Now that is a normal uh, architecture over here or the normal uh, anatomy of the vessels renal artery. This normal distribution of the renal arteries is present in only 70% of the Indian, of the population. Okay. One more thing that as the renal artery goes to the respective kidney, they will give off branches to the ureter because you all know that we have the ureter that is coming up from the renal pelvis from here and we have the ureter on both the side. Okay, we have the ureter on both the sides that is lying behind the artery and over here in the upper part of the kidney we have the respective uh, adrenal glands. So this artery over here, renal artery will give off branches to the ureter as well as it will give branches to the inferior suprarenal artery that is your lower adrenal artery. Okay, so it will give off branches and then it will enter to the hilum, anterior to the renal pelvis that we know at the structures which are lying in relation to the hilum anterior to posterior we had the vein artery and pelvis so artery lies in front of pelvis so this is anterior to posterior relation of the renal hilum okay now this is present in 70 percent of the population that is a normal way in which the renal arteries go now as we know embryologically that the kidneys they ascend up the kidneys are sent up so initially they were in the lower part of the body in embryonic life in the sacral area and then they slowly slowly ascend from the pelvic and the sacral area to their normal position now as they ascend up, they also develop or they also have few of the accessory renal arteries, few of the accessory renal arteries which is present in around 30% of the people. So that is a big huge number. So as they ascend up, so normally most of the renal artery, accessory renal artery, they come from the lower part. They come from the lower part that is they will be arising and going where towards the lower part of the kidney, lower part of the kidney. Okay, so in 30% population it is like this. So 70% population you have a pair of renal artery, while in 30% population you will have accessory renal arteries. Okay, so do bear that, that in mind. So accessory renal artery present in around 30% population. Now this accessory renal artery as you have seen that normally it is from the lower part or it is going to the lower part of the lower or we can say the inferior pole of the kidney. This accessory renal artery also lies in relation that is it lies normally anterior to the renal pelvis or if there is ureter to the renal ureter. So we know that the pelvic ureteral junction is around there, at a, around that point only that is near the inferior pole of the kidney. So as it is anterior to the renal pelvis of the ureter, in most of the cases of PUG obstruction, that is a pelvic ureteral obstruction in children, it is seen that around 28% of cases those children had an extra renal artery on the lower part. So this extra renal artery has an important clinical applied for the PUG obstruction. Okay, and we have seen that is most commonly on the inferior side. Okay, so this is how the renal arteries they enter and there are few anomalies in the beginning. Remember they will give branches to the adrenal gland as well as to the ureter. Okay. Now as the renal artery enters inside, there are various branches of the renal artery. So what it does first, as it enters inside, as it enters towards the hilum, it will divide into few of the divisions, not few but basically you have the anterior and the posterior division. Before it uh, enters into the hilum, it will divide into these two divisions. These two divisions are going to give off the segmental arteries, the segmental arteries and there are how many segments? There are around five segments, there are around five segments in the kidney. 
Post division give off a one to one of the segment, and the rest of the four segments are given up by the anterior division of the renal artery. Okay, so these are anterior posterior divisions of the renal artery. The posterior division may go behind the renal pelvis, may enter the renal hilum behind the renal pelvis, may. Okay, so this figure over here is telling you the various segments. So this is the anterior view. If you look at the right kidney anteriorly, then this would be our apical segment. This would be our superior renal segment. Remember segments due to the distribution of the segmental artery. This would be our middle segment and this would be our inferior segment. This would be our inferior segment. Okay. If we look at laterally, laterally means on the side view, right kidney again laterally. So remember over here we are viewing at the right kidney. Okay. If you view it laterally, this again would remain the apical, superior, middle, inferior and this becomes our posterior segment. Now this was on the posterior division. If you look at the posterior view of the right kidney, again this would be, you can see the size of the posterior, uh, posterior segment has increased. And this is our apical segment, that is our superior, middle, and this again becomes our inferior segment. Okay. Remember over here that these segments, these segmental arteries, they are end arteries. So that is also a very frequently asked question in uh, any of the exam, that segmental arteries are end arteries. Point number one. Second point is that uh, if you look at the lateral view, you'll see that okay, this area, you have a big longitudinal separation from the anterior and posterior division. So therefore the broadals, it is known, it was known as the broadals avascular plane, the broadals avascular plane, though it is not practically feasible now, so now it is not yet followed, but it's still for the historical purpose. That on the lateral side, the broadals described that there is an avascular plane by which you can enter the kidney if you have to do a partial nephrectomy. Suppose the patient had a small amount of, uh, you know, a small, small piece of uh, carcinomatous tissue inside the kidney and you are doing a partial nephrectomy. And this becomes a avascular plane. But nowadays it is, nowadays it is seen that the, it is far away from avascular. There are various vessels which are going from there. Just for the namesake of Brodel's avascular plane that you can remember over here. So what we said that there are two divisions which give off the segmental arteries which are our end arteries. Now what happens after that, what happens after that, that these segmental arteries, they are going to divide into few. Now we have seen the previous video about the basic internal structure. This was the outer part, this was our cortex, this was the pyramid which was a part of the medulla, which was a part of the medulla, okay, this was a pyramid and this was the apex of the pyramid that was our known as the papilla, okay, so that was cortex and this was the medulla part, papilla. And between the two pyramids, this region was our renal columns, was our renal columns. Okay, so what happens over here is that this was supposed to be the renal vessel, obviously the renal artery over here. Now focus mainly on the renal artery because as if we understood the renal artery, same name in the, just in the opposite direction would be the name of the renal veins. But this renal artery entered inside, entered inside, then it gave off the two divisions, then the segmental artery. A segmental artery will give off lower arteries. So suppose the lower artery is basically for, if I put a arrow over here is to describe this stuff over here, that suppose this is your one of the lower arteries going, so lower arteries are basically going towards a pyramid. That lower artery as it reaches the pyramid, before it reaches the papillae, it will divide into interlobar arteries, that is between the two pyramids, these would be your interlobar artery. This would be interlobar artery. Now as this interlobar artery reaches, where between the cortex and medulla, it it, it, it is said that it uh, dichotomizes or it divides over into the two arcuate arteries. So these these would be your branches over here will going on the sides. These would be our arcuate arteries. This location is the location of the arcuate artery. So arcuate artery could be a question. It is a vessel which is lying between the cortex and medulla. So superficial to it you have the cortex and deep to it you have the base of the pyramid that is the medulla. So arcuate, which vessel lies between cortex and medulla, the answer is arcuate artery. This arcuate artery will give off the interlobular arteries, that is now inside the lobules, known as interlobular arteries. Okay, interlobular. This was the interlobar, this has become the interlobular arteries. These interlobular arteries, as we have seen in the previous video, I hope you have seen, if not, then I will give you the link, you can have a look. This is structure, cortex and medulla, they are having the nephrons and the tubules. This whole cortex and medulla that we've seen over here, these are the ones which are having the nephrons. And the nephrons we know, nephrons is made up of glomerulus, the Bowman's capsule, all the tubules including the endless loop. 
therefore this these interlobular arteries they will give up the arterioles mainly which the afferent and efferent which form the glomerulus and thyroid capsule and even your whole capillary plexus so this is the distribution of arteries i have tried to write down over here so that we get a basic idea so here also we can have a look at it it was a renal artery that was given off by the aorta it divided into divisions first these divisions divide into segmental arteries which were i am writing over here e and d and arteries the segmental arteries will go towards a pyramid towards mainly a pyramid it will give off a lower artery now before entering inside the pyramid it will give off an interlobar that is between the pyramids now as it reaches the junction of the cortex and medulla so that is the junction of cortex and medulla it will give off an arcuate artery arcuate artery direction is like an arc okay around the base of the pyramid that is our arcuate artery arcuate artery will give off the interlobular arteries these interlobular arteries are now in the territories of the nephrons so they will give off the afferent arterioles which will go inside the bowman's capsule they form the capillary plexus known as the glomerulus comes out as a efferent arteriole uh, comes out as a efferent arteriole the job is not yet completed they will go around the tubules they form a capillary plexus the peritubular capillary plexus so i have numbered over a 1 and 2 there are two capillary plexuses and then there's the branches of this efferent arteriole will also form the vasa recta they are the recta means a straight so this vasa recta they will act around the medulla because medulla is the place where we have basically the henle's loop so these vasa recta are straight vessels these are straight vessels which will be around this henle's loop so imagine this is the henle's loop and these would be a vasa recta which will be running around the henle's loop so they act as a counter current uh, multiplier counter current multiplier exchange system for these uh, loop of henle okay and subsequently if you know these names then obviously if we, if we reverse the direction then ultimately we have this uh, renal vein that will be coming out where in front of the artery so if you reverse the whole direction there is a renal vein that is coming out so a few points over here i told you the end artery remember the lower is for the pyramid the arcuate artery location is very important and there are two set of capillaries over there the glomerulus and the peritubular capillary plexus two set of capillaries inside the vasculature of the kidney okay so this was our basic idea about the arteries and the veins of the kidney now if you look at the veins then there are few important things that we can look from the vein side so if we look at the previous figure the starting one over here so here we made the arteries now if we also try to make the veins over here then let us see how interesting it becomes veins are where in front of the artery okay the vein artery pelvis the veins are in front of artery and therefore this also the vein would be in front of the artery left renal vein and they are draining where they are draining mainly into the ivc this is your right sided ivc right sided ivc which is going down up till here okay coming up from the higher up t8 so it is basically direction is over here it is going into the uh, right atrium so this would be that direction so this is our right renal vein and the left renal vein we can see that the left renal vein is a longer vein okay left renal vein is longer vein and left renal vein will also be draining the gonadal veins coming from the testicular or the ovarian vein it will also be draining the your the adrenal veins okay on the mainly on the left side not on the right side on the left side we have this left gonadal vein and the left adrenal vein left adrenal vein may sometimes be accompanying the left inferior phrenic vein so left adrenal vein may also be having the left inferior phrenic vein along with it so that is a plus or minus but yes the left adrenal vein is always running the left gonadal vein is always running into the left renal vein okay so this is a basic idea over here that how the veins are located and you can see the veins are located right in front of the artery now from the aorta we also know from the aorta we also know that at this level this is our uh, uh, we say the transphyloric plane we have the artery coming down this is our our superior mesenteric artery so this is our superior mesenteric artery that is coming out so let us try to draw it over here so it is right in front so if you look at a lateral view if you look at a lateral view then this is supposedly the aorta and this is the superior mesenteric artery that is coming in front of it anterior posterior okay i am writing over sma and i am writing aorta over here so left renal vein is present where left renal vein is just at the angle of it just at the angle of it okay therefore at times when the superior mesenteric artery is you know there is a sudden loss of weight there is because superior mesenteric artery is into the mesentery there is a loss of mesenteric fat if there is acute severe weight loss then the superior mesenteric artery may may compress this left renal vein between it and the aorta and that is known as your nutcracker syndrome we'll come to it that is known as your nutcracker syndrome 
so we are just seeing the basic idea that how the veins and the arteries are in a relation to each other and your kidney now there are few important points about this renal vein that we can understand first of all over here the left renal vein as we had just discussed this left renal vein is having other tributaries also let like the gonadal vein and our and our adrenal vein okay left renal vein as we saw it is around three times three times the length of the right so left renal vein length is around 7.5 cm that is 3 inches and the right renal vein length would be around 2.5 cm therefore as the left renal vein length is quite much therefore it is a preferred it is a preferred vein it was a preferred side for live donor nephrectomy okay, for live live donor nephrectomy better to take the left kidney out because there is too much of left renal vein so that you can take the tissue out you can fix it in the recipient okay so there's a preferred side is our left side due to the increased length of the left renal vein okay then there was a nut cracker syndrome which i told you nut cracker syndrome okay nut cracker syndrome between the superior mesenteric artery and the aorta so when left renal vein is compressed it may lead to hematuria or varicocele because the gonadal vein is coming over here so it may lead to hematuria or varicocele in children or varicocele in children basically the males the boys very go see in children okay so this is not cracker syndrome we can remember the other thing over here is the renal collar now what is this renal collar we just saw that the renal vein was lying in front of the renal artery so if we just try to make it again not the whole picture but just this renal artery okay this is supposedly the renal artery over here okay and it was coming from the aorta over here this was coming from the aorta okay on the right side what we had on the right side we had the ibc okay and in front of this we had this as the left renal vein we had this as the left renal vein okay this was ibc and this was a left renal vein now at times the renal vein may there could be another left renal vein that could be passing behind the aorta that could be passing behind the aorta that is known as a renal collar so renal vein both the renal veins and the posterior they form a collar around the aorta that is known as renal collar at times this anterior vein may be absent anterior renal vein may be absent and then only this posterior renal vein is present that is known as a retro retro aortic renal vein retro aortic retro means behind so obviously behind the aorta you have a single renal vein that is also possible okay so retro aortic renal vein and anterior if uh, both are present then it is known as a renal collar okay one more last thing which i want to tell you is the presence of collaterals now what are these collaterals as we saw ibc the left renal vein it is also getting the left adrenal as well as, as, well as the left gonadal vein and they could be left in peripheral vein now as the left renal vein passed in front of the aorta and aorta at this at this side is a common site for developing the aortic aneurysm aortic aneurysm therefore aneurysm treatment is our surgery only if there is a increase in size more than 6 to 7 7 cm only treatment for that would be a surgery so when we are operating on aorta because a, a, a aneurysm also occurs around this site only that is when the renal artery is given off so we have to ligate the vein because vein is when very close relation to the aorta because we are operating on the aorta so when you can the, the thing over here is we can easily ligate the left renal vein without causing much damage to the kidney over here the the condition is only one and that condition is that if you put a ligature that ligature should be medial should be should be medial to where the left adrenal and the left gonadal veins are joining it for if you put a ligature medial only then only there would be collaterals to this left renal vein so that it could be taken care of and they simultaneously they will enter into the ivc due, through the collaterals so the in aortic aneurysm when you if you have to ligate the left renal vein the point over here is the condition is ligate it just medial to where the other veins are joining it so which veins the adrenal and the gonadal vein so that is one condition that is one condition from the renal vein so this was the basic idea guys and all the clinical possibilities that we could uh, hold on for this uh, renal vasculature i hope you like the video if you like the video don't don't forget to like and do please subscribe the channel that's on my side doctor ankit and i'll be explained